This video is brought to you in part by SecondChanceGaming.com. They are a direct sponsor of me and this channel, so if you're looking to buy or sell cards, then definitely check out their site linked in the description. I'm a big fan of how they do business, so check them out and let them know that Phoenix sent you. But with that out of the way, let's get straight into the video. Hey! What's up, guys? Phoenix here, and this video is going to be another Yu-Gi-Oh! Pro Duel video on Yu-Gi-Oh! Pro 2, and this time I'm going to be playing with the ABC Draco deck that Calvin Zahan just recently, this past weekend, got top four at the UDS in Orlando, Florida with. I think this deck is very innovative. I think this deck could really go a long way. This deck has a very low chance of bricking, and unless this Upstart Goblin draws me into a field spell, then the the incredibly low chance of bricking has occurred. This deck literally plays and opens well like 84, 85-ish percent of the time, something like that. Like it opens playable all but around 15% of the time. And that's huge for any deck that's not Zoo. Um, like that's actually just huge, but so I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna have to set this. <laughs> I'm not even gonna set these. Like they're just, they're literally the cards that are throwaway. If my opponent has like Twin Twister or something like that, this sucks. This is a bad time to be alive if you were me. But anyway, so by now you will have noticed that something is different. I'm physically talking to you. Um, oh shit, Swamp Frog. No, this is gonna be a bad time. Uh, but yeah, so I've figured out some ways to use this webcam. I bought that green screen like a month ago at this point. I've finally been able to set it up and utilize it in a way that's acceptable. Uh, there are still some improvements that I want to make, um, but those involve, one, getting a new webcam, because right now I'm filming on a Logitech C320, if I remember correctly. It's a 720p webcam that I bought in 2010, so it's old as piss. Um, and so it doesn't have the best quality control. And then... The next thing that I have to do is I need to uh, I need to improve the lighting in this area by buying some shop lights that I can hang to literally flood this green screen with light uh, because otherwise um, otherwise it becomes very it becomes very uh, shadowy on the green screen for the for the lack of light that's there in certain spots and it makes it very like hard on the camera to do proper chroma keying and so that's why I have like really like thick outlines around me. Um, is because the chroma key has to be stressed and very finely tuned in to certain degrees. But so this is activating, um, and I'm going to add a C because it's the only one that I don't have. And now I've got to deal with a totally awesome. <sighs> Shit, not my not my list of ideal situations to be in. But uh, I could draw into something potentially. My opponent. What is my opponent playing? Ah, uh, it looks like if there's if there's more than two cards being set, I'm expecting it to be Paleo, and that's going to just be a problem for me. Uh, but at the same time, n not really, actually. Uh, that's a masterpiece that actually works very well here. Because what I'm going to be able to do is I'm going to be able to use each of these true Draco spells and traps to force a masterpiece through. As long as none of his back row, like, actually reacts with these then I should be able to force through a masterpiece. Hmm, that's the thought at least. But so, I will set this Crush Wyvern. I will set both of these. Um, and then I will pass my turn. And then during the draw phase, I'm going to activate the Apocalypse and see what happens. Uh, because if he negates it with Toad, then great. That'll work great for me. Um, I can only do the Tribute Summon effect in his main phase, so I can't really stop him from uh, from getting the Toad Summon in the standby phase. But I can just start putting monsters on the board by trying to summon this Masterpiece. Trying to force this Masterpiece through. I, this deck has 12 Field Spells in it. This deck has 9 Union Hangers and 3 Diagrams. Like... The fact that this is happening is kind of strange, because statistically, this deck has so many ways to open combo, because you have the 12 field spells, right? All of them have some form of combo enabling in them of themselves. The three hangers, the three diagrams, and then the six uh, terraforming set rotation cards. So there's those. But then also, the gadgets by themselves are good openings for this deck as well, because like you can have like gadget in the thing to dig. Um, and like if you dig with Tsukiyomi and get to a diagram, you can pop the Tsukiyomi out of your scale with diagram and then suddenly, you know, you're really good off because you can usually summon ABC Dragon Buster and then maybe have a Masterpiece play set up. Oh, he made Mastar Boy. Mastar Boy. 
Ascend the master. Um, so this is summoned, so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna go ahead and force this uh this masterpiece down. Now that the totally awesome is gone, this should be a cinch. Because he has to out this with something. And if he's playing Paleo, the only thing that really outs it is like Dynamiscus. Um, that's the only thing that really outs it while uh, while not being um, what did he add back? He added back. Uh, I'm gonna add. I'm gonna activate the Crush Wyvern's effect. I'm gonna activate the Apocalypse's effect. And the Apocalypse is going to destroy. Um, I guess the Mastar boy. But now this masterpiece is unaffected by monsters and traps. Like that's very strong. Um, that's super strong. And then I'll summon this A out of my hands. Uh, I hit the Mastar Boy because even though, uh, the Master Boy, is that, uh, even though, like, it does get an effect and adds water back to his hand, I'm not worried about what he could do to this Masterpiece because I could have the, the, the spell and trap and grave loaded to deal with whatever he would summon. Um, but he just put back the Toad, it looks like. And what did he add back to his hand? It's not even in the card log. That's kind of upsetting. Um, that I just kind of have to guess. And I don't like that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like that the that I have to guess. That's such a shitty way to deal with it. Um, but so now he's in a terrible position. Like, he went from being in the best position with a Toad that was a really big problem for me, and I was figuring out how I was going to have to use Revival and Apocalypse around it to, you know, force this Masterpiece down. But then he got rid of his Toad into a, a Master Boy. And then it became easy for me. Easy mode. Because um, now I don't know how he legitimately outs this Masterpiece. Even if the Masterpiece can't pop cards. Because it's unaffected by traps, and if he's playing Paleo, then that's his deck. Um, he's got three sets down here. I can only assume that Masterpiece is immune to all of them. He's making another Master Boy. Weird. Weird indeed. But he does get have enough Frogs Engraved to literally force through another Toad here. So there's that. Hmm. This is, uh, this is weird. I find this weird and strange, but at the same time... I get to summon ABC Dragon Buster next turn, so I'm not too worried about it. That's the thing, too, is that he's a deal with his Masterpiece, but then, because this is on the board, this A Assault Core, um, because that's on the board, I just get to summon ABC Dragon Buster next turn. I just get to throw that card out there. And that's good. That means that Totally Awesome is going to be uh, totally small compared to an ABC Dragon Buster, because it's not even big enough to get over Masterpiece with, with the Master Boy boost. Uh, and it only decreases the, what, Attack and Defense of Fires? Yeah, it increases the attack and defense of fire monsters. Of all the random things. I think I, if I draw a diagram, or a terraforming, or set rotation, I think I would get diagram and force another masterpiece down because I've got this revival. Um, or True King's Return, rather. Uh, so, I think I would force that down because then I'd put this in grave, I'd pop another card. Uh, okay, so he is playing Paleo because um, this is an Opabania. There's literally no reason to be playing, to be summoning this card. In fact, I don't even think there's a reason to summon this card um, here because of the fact that he can't add Paleo cards if there's not a trap under it. The only effect he has is that he can play the traps from hand, so, Olenoids. Oh, oh, <laughs> okay, sure, I'll take this. I'll, I'll take this in a half. Yeah, we'll, we'll just, we'll get rid of that. We'll get rid of the Opabinia you just used materials into summoning. Because now you've still got frogs and graves, so you can summon another one, but at this point now you have to utilize those resources. So, yes, I'm 100% okay with this. Uh, Reckless Greed, sure. I don't know how you out the Masterpiece. <laughs> I don't know how. I'm about to, if, if Paleo can out a Masterpiece, I'm about to find out. Let's just put it at that. Uh, but so this Olenoids is back, which if I decide to pop it with one of my two Masterpiece bullets that I've got in Grave... Uh, that means that it will get banished. Very good. Um, Ronin Toten, you say. Uh, I feel like I will use the Masterpiece on this. Maybe. On the... Yeah, I'm gonna just go ahead and get rid of the Olenoids. Even though it's not that amazing of a value. Um, I will just go ahead and do this. Because it banishes it. Unless he just flips like Iron Wall here, in which case... Fuck... Uh, but otherwise, I think this is a really good play for the moment because it banishes this, it, which he went out of his way to like literally. He took a minus doing that. He used open. He made Opabinia with no traps just to activate the Olenoids from hand. And then the Olenoids hit a card that destroyed his Opabinia, 
and then he had to dedicate a reckless greed into uh, into his uh, play from there, just to get the Olenoids back. Um, like he still has another. Uh... Oh wait, this is unaffected by monster effect. I'm stupid. I am such a bad player at this game. I haven't read a Paleo card in so long. I forgot that it's unaffected by monster effect. I got so confused for a second when I saw he was just overlaying, and I was like, all right, well, got me. Got me, Duelist. Um, that doesn't do anything to, uh, that doesn't do anything to my masterpiece, so I'm okay with this. Putting the Swap Frog back into his grave, it looks like. Or the Dupe Frog? What did he put back? Yeah, he put the Swap Frog back, okay. Uh, so now he's gonna summon this Ronin Toten. He's got two more Ronin Totens that he can do, uh, this turn. Because he can summon Ronin... Uh, and then the other Ronin, and then if he overlays, uh, then is only gonna have one Ronin left in grave if he has something to detach off of. I fucking suck at this game, right? Um, I, I, I completely forgot that these Paleo cards are unaffected by monster effect. Um, uh, so I just wasted a Master King pop, uh, Master King, Masterpiece pop for absolutely no reason. Whatsoever, but it's fine, because I still get to make ABC Dragon Buster next turn, even if I draw no cards. If I were drawing no cards next turn, I could still make ABC Dragon Buster. So, that's okay. So what you making now? Toad? Toad seems strong. Toad seems like a strong option here. But at the same time, it just gets punched by Masterpiece. So at this point, you're wasting resources if you're going into Toad. Yeah, I don't know if that's right. I mean, you do get to summon Dupe Frog, but I get to summon ABC Dragon Buster. You have access into my graveyard. You, like, you get to, you get to see what's in my grave. Like, there's a B and a C there. You have to take note of this. <laughs> uh, like, you're attacking the A. That's going to put all of the pieces in grave that are required. I'm not even going to use its effect. I want to be able to summon that ABC Dragon Buster at the very start of my next turn. I'm going to use Masterpiece to pop one of these back row. Um, and then I'm going to summon ABC Dragon Buster. Depending on what card I draw, it changes a couple of different things. I'm stupid for wasting a Masterpiece pop, but at the same time, like I've said multiple times, I have no idea how Paleo gets over a Masterpiece. That's an Ash Blossom. That's really good. Yeah, maybe I can catch like a Reckless or a Card of Demise with that. Uh, but So I'm going to go ahead and activate this. It's unaffected by Monster Effects, so his Toad has no input whatsoever. Um, so I'll pop this. It's unaffected by Monster and Trap Effects. And so that's Psalm Strike. That was a really good hit. <laughs> A <laughs> very good hit, in fact. Uh, so I'll just special summon the ABC monster here, and then I'll punch over his toad. Uh, and from there, it should be pretty cookie cutter. I'd hope, at least. Um, I'm going to summon A into this zone. And I'm going to go into battle phase and attack, right? Uh, so I can... Attack the toad, and then that will open me up to ABC Dragon Buster's effect, which I could use to get rid of one of these back row. Um, then the masterpiece can punch over Opabinia, um, or I, I can crash this, but I don't think I want to crash it. That's the thing, uh, and I definitely need to deal with Opabinia, so I will. Um, so I'll deal with Opabinia here, and then the A can suicide with Master Boy, but at the same time I don't really care about that. Don't think that's a huge issue. I could actually just put A Assault Core onto my ABC Dragon Buster um, to give it immunity, but at the same time I could also just tag out next turn, so I don't even think that that's a factor that needs to happen. So yeah, I will suicide this. Um, does this have to be destroyed by, has to be destroyed by Battle or Card Effect? Um... So I will just suicide this, and I'm going to set up my ABC Dragon Buster to just tag out at the start of my next turn. Because that's just going to be better for me resource-wise, because that means I get to go into, like, deco, uh, deco Talkers, into Diamond Dyers. A few different things can happen. So he's just putting back, what, he just put back the Master Boy? I think he did. Uh, but so now I can activate this. I'll discard this Ash Blossom. I'll get rid of this card. Uh, if it's something like a trap, it forces him to activate it now. Oh, it's Card of Demise. Hell yeah. Well, Alright. Well, that Ash traded with a Card of Demise, so I guess I'm okay with that. Um, but now I'll just end my turn, and then at the start of his turn, I'm just going to tag the ABC Dragon Buster out. Oh, Scapegoat. 
<laughs> of all the cards, Scapegoat, I don't think that actually matters for you, is the sad thing. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and tag this out, so... Well, actually, no, there's no reason to tag it out. What am I afraid of? A Kaiju? He's playing Card of Demise. Um, I don't think that I need to be afraid of that. At any case. Like, I can just tag the ABC Dragon Buster out whenever I want. Oh, and a Spell Book of Prophecy. He's playing a weird Paleo deck. Waiting for how he outs the Masterpiece is the name of my game. And it looks like this is going to be a single duel video as well because it's getting long as shit. I'm in a match right now, but this is going to be a single duel video because we're already at 15 minutes and mm -mm. We're, not, uh, we're not in the business of uh, doing that. See, this is super cool. Um, is that like he gets to unload those things out of his hand, which is great, and this lets him make uh, Master Boy because it's a water. But I don't know where he's going with this play. Um, like he didn't get to draw for turn because of Reckless. He's already very far behind because he needs to out Masterpiece. The only way I could see him outing Masterpiece is like with Spellbook of Fate putting it face down here. But that's not even something that's gonna happen. Uh, that's like amazing. Wing Spider. Odd. Odd choice. Duelist. Proxy Dragon. All right. I can mess with it. I've, I can I can fuck with this. This seems all right. Now what are you gonna do with these two? You've normal summon for the turn. You got a Ronin Toten. All right. Cool. You've got. This is your last Ronin Toten that you can summon because that is a Blue Boy and another Ronin Toten, which you have to banish frogs. Um, and so you can't banish Ronin Toten for Ronin Toten. And so from here, I opened so shittily. And my opponent opened so well. He opened with Toad set 3 going second against a deck that literally set a monster and passed. I don't know how I'm winning this game, other than Masterpiece and the fact that his deck can't out it. Okay, cool. This still ha this still doesn't out the Masterpiece. Neat. Neato libido. Um, so what are you going to make? Firewall Dragon next to the Proxy with the Link Spider and the Guy Saber? I mean, that's the only play I see you making. And then you're, the only thing you can target that's affected is my ABC Dragon Buster, which I then just tag out. Huh. Like, I don't see how... I don't see myself not winning this game next turn. Because even if I don't draw a card, I've got these. Uh, so, like, this is, this is still fine. He's setting cards. And... Pass? If you pass turn, I'm holding down A, right? If he passes turn, no, he's using Firewall. What you gonna use it on? What is your target? Oh, he's adding a, his own monster back to hand. Okay, so sure. Yeah, that Firewall is literally doing nothing to my board other than just telling me when I'm tagging out my ABC Dragon Buster. Um, so he added a Ronin Toad into his hand. Which seemed kind of odd. But at the same time... Whatever. See, now this Firewall Dragon isn't loaded. So this is good for me. Completely. Because this means that I just get to go straight into a Diamond Dyer, at least. Um, or I could go into... I could go into Proxy Dragon, uh, Castell, and then into Decode Talker, and then ABC Dragon Buster. There's a few different options I have. Uh, set Rotation. That changes a lot of my options. We're going into Diamond Dyers. You best believe. Um... So uh, I can make uh, I can make Tornado Dragon and then Proxy Dragon with this um, special summoning whatever I add out of my ha uh, to my hands. Um, yeah, Tornado Dragon is probably just the better option because it forces one of his cards to answer it. Uh, yeah, so we'll just do that. So yeah, Tornado Dragon first with B and A into this zone up here. And then I'll use the if he chains any card to it that isn't a counter trap, I just get to use Tornado Dragon to snipe the other card. Um, so Tornado Dragon is just actually just really good here for this application because if he has something like Bottomless or Torrential, he's got to activate it now. In which case, Tornado Dragon snipes the other card, and I just make ABC Dragon Buster. But it looks like he's not chaining anything, which also works for me. So I'll pop this card if it's chainable. Great. If not, <laughs> who cares? Uh, Canadia. Uh, so, okay, so is a Book of Moon. doesn't actually matter. Um, what did he even target? Oh, he targeted my Tornado Dragon. Again, doesn't matter. 
He can summon back one of his traps, uh, but it looks like he's not doing that. And so I can activate the set rotation now. I just need to hope this, th that this isn't like an Olenoids. Uh, so I will set Union Hanger to my side of the field, and I will set Gateway of Chaos to my opponent's side. Not like it matters. Uh, but then I can activate the Union Hanger here, which will give me a C. Oh, it is an Olenoids. Well, shit. <laughs> Oops. Um, all right. Well, this doesn't really help you in the long run because I could still just make Proxy Dragon. Um, although it does suck because I used A and B because the entire intent was right to make Proxy Dragon with these two and then uh, be able to special summon whatever I added off Union Hanger off the C going to Grave. Uh, so those were the that was the intent. Oh, you can't link with face down monsters. That's right. Okay, well this is still fine for me. Still fine AF because I just get to attack this card with the masterpiece. I don't want to suicide my crush wyvern. In fact, I probably should have though because now I can just attack it with the proxy dragon. But at the same time, this is a bigger target than proxy dragon or than the crush wyvern is. So he kind of needs to out the tornado dragon, or else I just flip summon it next turn. I just hit the wrong card with my tornado dragon. <laughs> Um, oops. Oopsie doopsie. I mean, there's nothing I can do about it. Uh, other than just, uh, just take the, take the establish. I'm literally only winning because of this masterpiece. Masterpiece! Card's perfectly fine, right? Doesn't have to be hit at all, right? No, this card is actually just a piece of shit. And True Draco is still just an engine in decks like this where it just becomes a problem. Uh, like, this Pale I'm, I have no reason to be winning against this Paleo deck other than Masterpieces on the field. <laughs> That's the only reason. If this Masterpiece hadn't been on the field, then I would have lost turns ago, probably. Because ABC Dragon Buster, the way that I would have had to summon it, really forced and really nonsensical. Um, and I was not playing on a lot of cards to begin with because my opening hand was kind of a bricky hand. Um, so, like, there's just... Ugh, this is just... Mm, this I... Masterpiece is not a bannable card, apparently. <laughs> it definitely is, though. Um, so, Knowledge, pick up two more cards. Yeah, sure. There are probably more traps that can't out Masterpiece. <laughs> uh, fuck me. Um, so, yeah. So, now if you attack the Crush Wyvern, uh, which is the right play, I've got A, B, and C all loaded in Grave, ready to go for ABC Dragon Buster. I've just got to get the Tornado Dragon out of my uh, extra monster zone, which any monster that I draw next turn, any monster or field spell uh, clears it. Literally any one. Um, but so I'm going to change this position. I'm going to activate its effect. Getting rid of this to get rid of one of these. So I'll just get rid of the middle one again. Um, I mean, okay, that's a Dynamiscus. All right, so now you're going to remove my monster from the field for me, which is even more fine. Um, summoning Olenoids back, you have no win condition. I'm about to summon an ABC Dragon Buster next to Masterpiece, and your win condition doesn't really exist. Um, so we'll activate this, and we'll add another Union Hanger, we'll activate the Hanger, get a search, do some shit. Wait, do I not have any more ABCs in my deck? There's no way. Oh, it's because of this is here! Ah! Well, at least this is uh, at least this is possible. Um, at least ABC Dragon Buster is possible. Um, fuck me. <laughs> this was such a weird way to handle this. This is not how I wanted this to be handled. Uh, but so I'm gonna get rid of this back row. If it's a strike, then fuck me. Uh, what was it? It was a uh, it was another Dynamiscus. All right. Well, now now I just win. Yeah. Okay. So that is going to be the end of this video. I'm literally not playing out game two or three of this because I'm playing a match, but I'm not dealing with this. Not at all. Not in any way, shape, or form. Mm -mm. Not dealing with it. Uh, just so you guys can see the list that is being played, though, uh, I will go to the side decking screen. It is literally just Calvin Hahn's list card for card because I think that it has a lot of room to be innovated. I think it's a very innovative list as well. And so I think there's things that could be tweaked as well. But anyway, that's going to be it for this video. Sorry for how long it was for a single game, but whatever. I couldn't control that. My opponent was literally just flailing around in the face of a masterpiece for turns and couldn't really deal with it. So there's that there's that that uh, happened. But anyway, 
As always, guys, thanks for watching. Let me know what your thoughts are in the comments down below. Drop a like if you want to see more dual videos and stuff of that nature. Subscribe if you're new here and want to see more awesome Yu-Gi-Oh! content. And links, as always, are in the description down below to my Facebook fan page as well as my personal Patreon page. If you want to support my ability to continue creating content because you enjoy the content that I make as well as getting rewards back for yourself as well as, like, entry into personal, uh, not... Entry into my personal Discord server and entry into the, uh, the raffle giveaways that I'm going to be doing every month for a box of Yu-Gi-Oh! product or something sizable, something comparable in terms of cost and size, uh, then definitely go check out the Patreon page if that's something that you are interested in. But other than that, special thanks as always to Travis Miller, Iradium, Jay Garcia, Yuki Phoenix, and Troy Perkins, as well as everybody else that is currently supporting me on Patreon this month. You help out a ton in terms of making whatever is possible on this channel possible, and you have my eternal gratitude. But as I've already said, thanks for watching, thanks for your time, and as usual, guys, take care. I'll see you in the next video.